I'm Eric. I'm Connor. And, and this, this is, is a PIO, PIO vlog. vlog. Metro Fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Uh, calls reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Multiple callers, a flame scene coming up the unit. Hustle parties trapped. If there's an older lady that lives there, she is in that scene. Right, medium size, two story multi family. We have a smoke and flame shot. Alpha side, LBS will be command. We're manning the offensive strategy. We do have extensions to the second floor. Headed to the third. Let's go ahead and start a second alarm. 334, Tower 35, Ladder 12, Oron 811, and 342, and 342, Medic 211, Medic 21, Battalion Chief 3, Battalion Chief 5, Safety 35, Net Com Op 3, Confirmed Multiple Restructure Fire. Hey everybody, welcome back to another vlog. Thanks for joining us. The first incident that I'm going to talk about today was a two alarm structure fire that South Metro had early in the morning on June 8th. Engine 31, outside fire, map page R30D 5814, South Paris Court. Tower 35, Tower 32, Medic 31, Battalion Chief 3, Safety 35, Metcom Ops 3, Unconfirmed Residential Structure Fire. Engine 42, Engine 33, Medic 32, Battalion Chief 5, Med 1, Confirmed Residential Structure Fire. Battalion 3, Metcom. Go ahead, Metcom. With the, with the units responding to a confirmed residential structure fire, it looks like it's going to be possibly... Two houses now on fire. It started out as an AC unit that was arcing up the roof, and now the house next door is also on fire. Temperature is going to be 60 degrees. Relative humidity is at 56. Winds out of the north northwest is seven miles per hour. Three Back on engine 31. 31, go ahead. Engine and medic 31, safety 35 on scene. We have uh, a working residential structure fire in between two structures. We'll be in the offensive strategy, transitional fire attack, in between both houses, and checking for residents. 31 will be assuming I to command on off screen. And 31, I copy yourself. Medic 31 and safety 35 are on scene. A working residential structure fire. In between the two structures, you'll be an offensive strategy. Transitional fire attack in between both of the residences. You're now assuming I to command. 233. Move in if you can. We do have two Move houses. in. Get closer. Get both sides. Get both sides. Uh, it's a three quarter in place. We're just the house. We're we'll beginning to exterior your fence from the fire attack. Is that propane fuel? At South Metro, once a second alarm is transmitted, it actually generates a completely separate call. So you'll notice in the second alarm dispatch that it's a different location than the actual fire. 
And that is so the units that are responding on the second alarm are actually responding to a staging area, not to the fire scene. So we want them to assemble in an area away from the fire to not stack it up with apparatus and so that there's more of a precise ordering process when command needs those resources. We also have a designated radio channel, which is our Ops 14, and those units will respond on that as their staging channel as soon as they're dispatched to the call. Rescue 34, Tower 45, Engine 22, Engine 14, Engine 44, Engine 15, Medic 34, Medic 44, District 1, Battalion Chief 2, Safety 18, METCOM OPS 14, Second Alarm Structure Fire, Map Page R, 30, D, East Orchard Road in South Macon Street. Investigators from the South Metro Fire Marshal's office determined that this fire was started from improperly disposing of oil staining rags and an oil staining tarp that were put underneath a deck where a shed was located and that actually spread to both homes as you saw in the videos. It's really important to store oily rags appropriately and one of the best ways that people can do that is to put them in an empty metal container that is sealable, fill it up with water and make sure that that top is sealed tight then the oily rags can stay inside where it's away from oxygen and they're saturated with water until there's a hazmat roundup or a facility that you can take it to to dispose of properly. But allowing it to be exposed to oxygen is what can start that spontaneous combustion process and that's exactly what started this fire that severely damaged two homes. We have some exciting news to share with all of you. South Metro will be welcoming a new fire station in spring of 2021. It will be the 30th station in the district and it will be called Station 20. It's in Highlands Ranch at the corner of East Wild Cat Reserve Parkway and Summit View Parkway. Recently we had a groundbreaking ceremony for this new station. We had chiefs there, board members, really important people for our fire department and it was a great opportunity for everyone to celebrate in this new station and uh, to be ready for it to come again in spring of 2021. The apparatus that will be housed at station 20 includes an engine and a brush engine. Eric is just about to tell you about an incident that happened just across the street from Station 20, so they would have responded. Just after 11 p.m. on Friday the 12th, South Metro responded to a three-acre wildland fire in Highlands Ranch on the west side of Mountain Vista High School. It was actually the second wildland fire of the evening, and it was definitely the biggest. And when firefighters arrived on scene, they were facing some pretty active fire conditions for that late at night. The humidity was in the 30 to 40% range, which is pretty high for uh, wildland fires in our district. We usually worry about critical conditions when it's in the teens and uh, single digits. Very windy conditions were pushing that fire to the north towards Wildcat Reserve Parkway. And thankfully, because of the way the wind was blowing, it wasn't threatening any structures. We have multiple RPs calling in advising it's going to be in the west parking lot of Mountain Vista High School. It started at 50 yards by 10 feet, spreading quickly towards Wildcat. Uh, the original RP is still advising it's growing pretty quickly. It's the size of a football field now, possibly larger. All right, let's upgrade to large. Command safety 18. Oh, safety 18. Delta. 
I've opened the gate by that power station. It does give good, give good access, but it's kind of it in front of the head of the fire. I'm making my way down a road to the south that's uh, closer up by the homes. None of the homes are at risk, and I'll continue to scout for good access. But as that fire burns up towards Wildcat, uh, that fire station road will be good access. OEM, that come? Good. OEM's requesting a size. Can you give me a tentative size of the fire? It's tough to tell right now, but I'd uh, guess uh, approximately three acres. Copy, 2337. Our fire investigators obtained video from the school, and it showed a vehicle driving into the parking lot. Some kind of an aerial firework device was launched from it, and it landed in the grass, which started the fire. So as we start to get closer to Independence Day, it's not uncommon for South Metro to see vegetation fires in our open space areas, especially near trails or places that are kind of away from neighborhoods where kids and teenagers feel like that's safer to shoot off fireworks because adults aren't going to see them there. Of course, the huge risk with that is that all of our neighborhoods are still relatively close to these open space areas, so it could turn into a wildland interface fire and easily threaten people's lives and property. So we just ask that people please check with their local regulations and make sure that they are shooting or using legal fireworks and check and make sure that there aren't any fire restrictions that are prohibiting them entirely. As long as those fireworks are legal, we just want to encourage people to use them in non-combustible areas. Through all of the ups and downs over the past few months, our academy class 20-1 has still been training hard with their class. So because of COVID-19, they had to split up into smaller groups because of different procedure changes and guidelines with the pandemic. So some recruits have been in Littleton at the Troy Jackson Training Center, and some have been in Parker at the Joint Services Facility. But recently, they all got to come together and train in order to be online here pretty soon once they get through Academy fully. They went through different scenarios, uh, really got a lot of good training opportunities in. So here's a look at that. South Metro responded to two dive calls. The second one of the day was at Chatfield State Park and it was reported as two people in the water that couldn't get out. As our firefighters were responding, park rangers were the first to access the scene and they found two people in the water. One of those people went under the surface of the water and couldn't be rescued. The other person was pulled onto the boat and park rangers did CPR and our fire paramedics transported that person to the hospital. It turned into an underwater rescue and dive team members from station 16 and station 31 both responded, dove down, and they were able to locate the patient. They performed CPR on the boat on the way to the dock and the patient was transported to the hospital and sadly was pronounced dead at the hospital. Dispatch Park 1602, we have a person in the water at Chatfield State Park. Can you start dive rescue? We copy person in the water at Chatfield. You have a specific location. We'll get a dive rescue going. 
Die 16, Engine 19, Engine 13, Medic 16, Medic 13, Battalion Chief 1, West Metro Battalion Chief 3, Safety 18, Metcom Op 3, Dive Alert 3 Water Rescue, Map Page W19B, at Chatfield 11500, North Roxborough Park Road, In this case, both of the people involved were not wearing personal flotation devices, so they were unable to keep themselves up on the surface of the water to be rescued. This was a really tragic incident, and it's very sad that we were unable to revive the person who drowned. It's also a very important reminder to wear personal flotation devices anytime that you're doing water-related activities, whether that's in a lake, a pond, a river, a stream, anywhere where you could potentially be swept away or fall into the water and have to be keeping keeping yourself up. Those personal flotation devices are designed to save your life and we really encourage people to wear those. We have plenty of patches to shout out this week. Thank you all for being patient to see your patch show up on our vlog. The first one is Northeast Ingham Emergency Services Authority. This one is from Michigan. Thank you so much. We actually have a few that were sent from someone from Michigan. We have the cardigan fire department, the Toledo, Ohio Firefighters Museum, very cool. This is a public safety patch, Capital Region Airport Authority in Lansing, Michigan. We have Bighorn Emergency Services Fire Rescue from Ghost River. And we have the City of Toronto Fire Department. This one is from Dexter and his dad works for Tough Shed. So it says, tough love, thank you first responders. Cool decal there. We received a really neat letter from somebody in Canada and this person collects plenty of fire memorabilia as well as apparatus and has created his own decals as well as patches. So this one is the Fire Truck Association Fire Trucks patch which is really neat. So thank you so much and some decals to go along with it. We've got a few more here. These ones are from the Netherlands. We have Brandweer and this is another one, Brandweer. Thank you all so much. We are so excited to add them to our growing collection. All right, it's time for my half of our patch shout outs and we've got a ton this time. Um, I've got Brampton Fire from Canada. And then there's actually three different versions from St. Catherine's Fire in Canada, and then St. Thomas Fire. This one's a little closer to home. This is Shawnee, Kansas. These two are very not close to home. In fact, Connor and I think this might be the furthest away we've ever gotten patches from. These are two from Hong Kong, China. This one, if it was from Colorado, it would be Louisville, but it's from Kentucky, so it's Louisville Fire. Thanks for that. We've got the Security and Emergency Response Training Center patch and a decal with that. Another one from Canada. This is Syncrude, Canada. Here's Silver Hill Volunteer Fire Department. Here's a Social Security Administration Special Agent patch. Here's the Elk Ridge Volunteer Fire Department in Howard County, Maryland. Glenview, Illinois Fire Department. And then the last one that I have is Prince William County, Virginia, 
Station 15, super cool. So thank you to everybody who sent those in. We also got a lot of very cool drawings and we really appreciate those. We're gonna find out a way that we can put them on our wall in our office and then we'll share what that looks like when we're able to get all of those up. Thank you all so much for tuning into our vlogs. Eric and I so enjoy connecting with all of you. We've also been listening to your suggestions and one that came in was for Station Saturday. So we're gonna do it. We are totally gonna do this. So put your comments below of the station that you wanna see a tour of first. And we are excited for this new playlist to bring you guys.